If you don't have much of a savings pot, let alone a rainy day fund, then don't worry, you're not alone. One third of working age households in Britain have less than £1,000 of savings. However much you have in savings right now, if you're not saving towards your future, then you're not doing your future self a favour. If you're not only never able to save, but also regularly spending beyond your means, then you're not only creating stress for present day you, but you're also creating additional stress for future you. Savings help us to cover emergency costs. They help us to create a life that we love, whether that be through building on skills so that we can go into a career that we want to go into or helping us to fund the things in life that bring us joy. And they're a reassurance that the dreams we have for the future can come true because we've got a financial plan in place to make it happen. And they also help us to avoid debt should the unexpected happen. For example, losing your job, been there, or an unexpected car repair definitely been there. Look, saving money right now has never been harder. It's hard just to balance your budget due to the cost of living. We're going to talk about how you can not only live within your means, but also find that extra cash you need to hit your savings goals. And this works even if you're on a tight budget. Now I'm going to really break it down into a very, very simple reality. When you are on a tight budget, you can save money in two ways. You spend less or you make more. And we are going to talk about both of these. First of all, you want to be really, really, really clear on your why and set a realistic goal. People who set goals are far more likely to succeed. And I just want to add to that and say that people who set goals with the support of their loved ones, particularly if you live with a partner, husband, wife, you are far more likely to succeed if they are on board and cheering you on as well. Motivation is so, so key here. So you want to be absolutely clear what are you saving for? It can be really, really helpful to think about the SMART principle when it comes to setting a goal. SMART goals are specific, they're measurable so you can track your progress, they should be within your ability to attain, and they should be realistic for you to achieve within a specific time frame. So it's all about embarking on a journey, setting a realistic goal that you know you're going to be able to get to the end of that journey. So please forget about all of those TikToks that are telling you you will save 20 grand this year if you do this savings challenge. 20 grand savings this year is great, but if you're earning 20 grand a year, you're not going to save 20,000 pounds in a year. Not unless you suddenly experience like a huge boost in income and let's be honest, most realistic side hustles aren't going to bring you in 20 grand in a year. So ignore that. Look, personal finance is called personal finance for a reason. There is no one size fits all sort of method of balancing your budget and your savings journey. There is no point in setting a ridiculous goal beyond your means because you'll likely fail fairly early on and then that sets you back to square one, you're despondent, that's not gonna be good. So decide not only what you need, but what you can realistically afford. Make small changes and smart swaps in your budget. Now you may be on a tight budget because your income is low or because your expenditure is very high. If it's that last one, then great, because there's probably plenty of places in your budget where you can cut back. One of the biggest financial mistakes I think that I have ever made is increasing my expenditure in line with my increase of income. And this is sometimes called lifestyle creep. Instead of setting that extra money aside to work for you, you're just mindlessly spending. Cutting back on spending when you're on a really tight budget may seem impossible, but I think there is always something that can be done. Maybe you have to get a little bit creative. If you love getting your hair done, then why not consider switching to a student hairdresser? A lot of local colleges will have a hairdressing course and they will have students wanting to practice on people and they'll be either free or charging not very much at all for those cuts. Alternatively, you can do what I do sometimes, which is to just trim my hair at home. All you need to do is buy a pair of hairdressing scissors, and then you can cut back on the number of times that you go to the hairdressers in a year. Confession time. I don't drink coffee or tea. I know, I have two kids, how am I doing this? And yet, despite my avoidance of this vice, I am not a millionaire, despite what every budgeting video out there might tell you about giving up on tea and coffee. <laughs> However guys, this tip is still relevant because even for a weirdo non-coffee drinker like myself, I still spend money on snacks and drinks when on the go. So it is always sensible, whatever it is that you like to drink, eat when you're on the go, 
to take it with you. You could buy snacks in bulk and then break them down into smaller portions in small Tupperware pots and take those out and about with you. Whatever you do, buying in a coffee shop, in a cafe, on the go, or any kind of snack station, that is gonna guarantee that you end up spending more. Instead of buying brand new books, head to the local library. Better yet, you can save money on fuel and on the parking to visit your local library by downloading a library app like Libby. Libby is fantastic. You can get eBooks and audiobooks, magazines and newspapers on there completely free. Instead of paying to go to a salon, do your own nails at home. If you love to eat out, why not try recreating your favorite dishes at home? If there are ready meals that you really enjoy, is there a cheaper way of making it yourself? Buy in bulk and batch cook meals. There are so many amazing social media accounts and websites providing free meal plans and recipes that are super cheap to make and it's all free it's all just out there it could save you hundreds of pounds a year on groceries and cheap meals don't have to be boring always have a plan for how you're going to use up leftover food for example whenever we roast a chicken i absolutely shred the meat off of the bones i don't leave any at all and then i'll use the carcass to make stock and soup look for the cheapest fuel in your area you can go online or download an app to check this out and aim to only use that filling station start rotating your subscription services aiming to only have one or two active in any given month negotiate better deals on your broadband and mobile phone services companies are always willing to haggle with you in order to avoid losing your business. Cut back on waste when it comes to energy. So never run the dishwasher or the washing machine when it's empty, run at a lower temperature, and stop leaving devices on standby. Buy secondhand and not brand new. And actually, I'll go one better, stop buying new stuff until you've worn, used up, finished with the last thing properly. The fast fashion industry and the treat yourself mindset has cost me thousands of pounds over the years. Try to break free of the pressure to buy by unfollowing, unsubscribing, getting rid of all of the temptations. And make sacrifices. Look, this can be tough if there are certain classes, social activities, things in your life that bring you a lot of joy. But is there a compromise that can be found? Can you cut back? Can you do the classes a little bit less? Can you go out a little bit less? Ultimately, it's about finding a balance between relieving financial stress and making sure that, you know, we keep the joyful things in our life that we really, really love. My next tip is to pay yourself first. The great thing about a savings goal is that the number is what the number is. You wanna save X in Y number of months. So X divided by Y gives you how much you should be saving every month. And to make sure that you hit that target every single month, it's much better to set a direct debit so that it automatically leaves your bank account. You wanna save the money that you need to save. You don't wanna save what you have left at the end of a month. And this way you're not tempted to spend it on something else. Try to keep track of your spending habits. Keeping an eye on what it is your money is going on every month can really help you to stay on track with your savings goal. I have this spreadsheet that I use every single month to keep an eye on my monthly bills and my regular costs, as well as look at where my money is actually going, so my individual transactions. Honestly, burying my head in the sand and just hoping for the best was one of the worst things I ever did for my bank balance. When it comes to money, the facts are the facts. Like, money isn't going to magically appear in your bank account, and if you spend it, money is definitely going to go out of it. I suppose the slightly reassuring and scary thing about numbers is that there's no uncertainty in them. Like, the facts are the facts, so, it's best to face it head on, don't be scared, try and let the numbers work for you rather than being intimidated by them or worried about them. My next tip is to put your money somewhere smart. One of the biggest mistakes that I have made with my own money is to not consider where I'm putting it, either out of laziness, because I'm overwhelmed with the choice or because I just assume I can't possibly understand the financial products out there. And the thing is not all bank accounts and savings accounts are created equally. They come with different interest rates and different terms and conditions. And by the way, guys, wherever you put your money, one place that you don't wanna put it is under the mattress. Doing that actually costs you money every day as the value of the money is eroded by inflation. In order to help you hit your savings goal faster, you wanna put your money somewhere where it's gonna work hard for you. 
you're working hard to save it after all, someone else should be pulling their weight around here as well. And that means putting it in the best savings account that is most appropriate for you. There's a ton of resources out there that can help guide you about good bank accounts, where the best interest rate is, what's gonna work best for you. If you are on a tight budget and you're not able to put away a lot every month, and it's worth noting that some savings accounts have a minimum deposit. Now, say it's 100 pounds and you can't afford to put away 100 pounds a month. There's no point opening that savings account if you're not gonna be able to hit that monthly target of £100 a month. So open an account that allows you to deposit regularly an amount that you can afford, but that also gives you a good rate of interest. Once you gain momentum, you will be earning some money on that pot. This is why the rich get richer without really trying, because their money is tied up in investments and savings accounts, and it's just growing every single day while they sit back on their yachts, enjoying the sun. What a life. If you have got this far and you're thinking, Vic, I have literally cut every excess that I can from my budget and I'm looking at 20 years to meet my savings goal. Do not panic and don't ditch me just yet. Let's say you want to save 10 grand in a year. That's 27 pounds and 40 pence per day. And there are lots of ways that you can get your hands on that money through side hustles. There are survey sites which you can do in your own time. If you sign up to lots of them, then I think it's really realistic to bring in about 200 pounds extra a month. There's mystery shopping and tasking apps. You could try becoming a delivery driver. There are companies providing flexible shifts such as Amazon and Deliveroo and Just Eat. And there's a huge number of remote working jobs on websites such as Fiverr in things like virtual assistant work or data entry and then there's fun side jobs like dog walking or pet sitting. Based on my experience of side hustles, I think it is completely realistic to bring in an extra thousand pounds a month. Look, helping out future me is one of my favorite things to do. That might be putting out the kids clothes the night before, running the dishwasher in the evening, adding fuel to my car long before I hit the red. These are all things I do to reduce stress in my life. And my finances are no different, whether it's putting money aside for my kids' future or getting money into my pension or planning our next house move. I am helping future me by planning ahead and making sure that there are no nasty surprises that are gonna derail me on the way. And honestly, guys, it is never too late to start lending future you a hand. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit subscribe.